Well, we got kind of a sad story today. Well, not kind of a sad story. It really is a sad story. This is the church where Christy and I were members for 15 years when we lived in Carmel. We spent a lot of time in this little barn here, but two nights ago, it all burned up. We're here to finish spreading their mulch, at least to get it to distributed so that the volunteers can do the, the final spreading. We'll spread the mulch and we'll talk more about this fire. Let's get started. Yeah, guys, this is sad. Uh, this is a 42, 4300, maybe even 4400 John Deere. I'm not sure exactly what size. It looks very similar to me to the 2 Series, the large 2R, or maybe the 3R. I can't remember. I've driven this tractor. We may have had it in a video. We did some parking lot work out here years ago. Apparently, this was the culprit. They had some overheating issues, or maybe it had mulch in it. I'm not sure exactly what was going on, but they drove it in here when it was smoking. Yep, lesson number one, if your machine is smoking, don't drive it in the garage with seven, eight other, nine other vehicles. Yeah, that's not, that's not gonna work well, and that's what happened here. So we've got ZTRs, we've got stand-on mowers, got attachments for the tractor here. I believe the box blade is the only thing that's uh, usable without, uh, without some work and probably the only thing usable at all. The tractor here, I believe, might have some salvage value. The rear tires didn't burn, so I'm expecting that the, the rear end here, transaxle, whatever you call it, is probably salvageable, and I'm not sure that some of these parts are available. Uh, if you're interested in these parts for a, let's say, 42, 4300, the exact model number I'll be able to put in the description because we've got some video with it. Um, if you're interested, let us know and we can probably get you in touch with the right people. The loader's gone. I mean, it's all bent up. It was hot. You, you can tell that it was quite hot since it was able to totally destroy what was going on in here. Insurance will cover some of this, but of course that tractor's not really that valuable anymore, right? So it's not going to replace it. It's not going to replace it with a new three or four series, two, three, four series, whatever it is. So yeah. Meanwhile, we've got mulch to spread. I'll go this way. Okay. I'll hit these right close here. I don't know if you got enough mulch. So that's why he said make it thin. Rex has been having some back issues, so I wanted to make sure he got the best seat in the house. He's got the air seat on the 3046R. I didn't give him any instruction. I guess he'll find the range lever and figure out which range is best for him. When we were finished, he gave me his review, and unfortunately, we didn't have the camera on. He said something like, this is the nicest tractor of the bunch. As we were eating lunch, he just kept bragging on it. I tend to agree, this is far and away the nicest tractor we have. Notice I'm not running any three-point hitch ballast on this one today. Rear tires are filled with rim guard, makes them quite heavy, and then we added the wheel weights as well. The mulch is lightweight, so I wasn't worried about the rear end coming off the ground. We weighed it before, I believe the tractor is over 5,300 pounds as configured. With the ground being wet, I didn't want to make it any heavier. In contrast, I am running some three-point hitch ballast on the 2038R. This brings back lots of memories. You know, Christy and I and Katria were heavily involved here for years and years and years. So, yeah, that was before we had tractors. Who would have dreamed we'd be running over the curb with a tractor here? <laughs> You know, this is one of those simple tasks that 
really is not hard to do with a tractor, but you know, with these guys having their tractor down, that's a lot of mulch to move. I think they start with 75 or 80 yards every year. Now, it looked to me like they were well over half done. In fact, I'm afraid they may not have enough mulch. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but yeah, I appreciate them calling. I still have a relationship with several folks that go to church here, and I just really appreciate them reaching out just an area we can help, you know, it's, it's easy and it's fun. So yeah, if you've been watching our channel for a while, you've actually seen uh, one of our closest friends here. His name is Russ and we've had him and his son on our videos. He actually owns a farm in Southern Indiana and we helped him remove some stumps and we mowed with our 10 foot brush mower. I can't remember. We had a whole day of tractor fun there. He's got a an older 5 Series. So, yeah, we, we've had a good relationship there and a lot of fun over the years. It's kind of chilly today. I'd say probably about 50, but you can tell the mulch is hot. It's steaming. It's all that decomposition going on. I don't know, I'm not putting near enough in here, but uh, I'm nervous they won't have enough mulch. So I'll just pile it here till we run out. I'm using the standard 57 inch bucket, which is not nearly large enough for mulch. I wanna give you guys a little hint. I have a new bucket on the way, but it didn't make it in time for this project. But I'll go ahead and tell you about it anyway. Maybe I shouldn't because if you guys order a bunch of them, I, not, I might not get mine. RedlineSystemsInc.com. It's a 60 inch mulch bucket, just a bigger overall bucket. It's not meant for you know heavy materials like dirt or rock but it's gonna allow us to take a bigger bucket full of mulch and it'll work on a 1025R too, so yeah. There's no reason for these larger tractors really for mulch because it's so lightweight. Okay, I think this will be the last bucket coming in this way for now. I don't think we've got enough here, but I want to make sure we at least cover some of it. I'll do a little of their spreading job for them. <laughs> when I was a part of this project, before I had my tractors, I was on the pitchfork, right? I was on the spreading crew. I'm glad to have the tractor. 1025R would be nicer for this. I would be a lot more maneuverable. I should have brought that. When you start covering large areas like this with mulch, the amount of mulch required is just amazing. It's really costly. I suppose maybe they could get by without doing this this year, but by the end of the season, it won't look very good if they don't cover it again. So just having these big mulched areas makes it, makes it costly to do every year. And as the church grows and, and their landscaping grows, the mulch requirements just get bigger and bigger every year. Same thing can happen at your house. I'm not sure we're gonna have enough. Well. I'm certain we're not going to have enough, but I, I don't know if they can even get a, you know, a really thin coating or not. I'm going to put my next buckets in this area, just so we'll have a little bit in each area. Those handicap signs remind me of a bad memory. Well, actually, a funny memory. Back in those days, they used walk-behind, stand-on mowers. So you had a little 
cart you rode on. And I'm gonna call it the user interface. Yeah, I'm a software guy. The, the user interface to drive the mower was not very easy. But there was, there was one point that if, if the mower got away from you, if you just let go of it, it would stop. Well, that's totally illogical because when the mower's getting away from you, the last, the, the, what you wanna do is grab onto it and pull it and do something. Well, I drove the mower while it was mowing, all the blades spinning, I drove it all the way up the handicap sign, all the way to the sign at the top of the post there before I was able to come to my senses and let go of the handle. And yeah, there was a guy standing right beside me watching. I noticed they have new signposts now. Are you getting along? Are you got most of your areas covered? I don't think we'll have quite enough. I I don't have enough, but I've kind of tried to distribute it. I don't know. I, I'm spreading it pretty thin. Me too. I guess we just do what we can do and Yeah. Yeah. I if they spread it thin, there may be enough here. And they may have to rob Peter to pay Paul on where they put some around the trees. Yeah. I think they got enough, but they put too much around the trees. And then we're supposed to use half of that other pile on the backside. So I think uh, we can't, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think we can borrow any from there or for around here. So I don't think so. We got what we got. Yep. Seems pretty solid out here. I don't think I'm hurting the yard too much. I think Rex got in the mud up there a little bit, but out here on the sod, it seems like it's pretty good. I'll go all the way up to the kids this time and wave. <laughs> that made it worth the whole day right there. Well, folks, that's it. They must have had most of the 75 or 80 yards already moved. I don't know. Because we didn't have but probably 20 yards, 25 yards left. Like always, I, I don't know I've ever been around a time where you've had too much mulch. But I certainly wasn't quite done having fun yet here. We'll do more mulch in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell.